Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Books and Beats episode one. I've already shot two episodes before. One was the introduction and one was the warm up. Today I'm going to be, for the first time, testing out the format that I have been uh, trying to do on this channel. So I'm going to be speaking today about we Need New Names, which is a book by No Violet Bulawayo. Every now and then I'll accidentally say No Violet, but please know that it's No Violet Bulawayo. I think that's how it's pronounced. And let's dive right in. So this book is a fiction novel penned by No Violet Bulawayo. That's actually her pen name. It's not her government name, if I can call it that. And the copy that I have is about 294 pages long. The book was originally published in 2013 in the UK. If you want to listen to this on Audible, it'll be about nine hours long to listen to. And I listened to it myself and I really enjoyed the voice actor. But also I'm someone who listens to things on two times the speed. So it could be that if you listen to it on a different speed, it won't be the same experience. Uh, the book follows a 10 year old darling who grew up in Zimbabwe and I'm going to read you the blurb but in my words I would say that uh, it's a young person, a young girl who is going through a variety of transitions and we follow her on that journey. So the blurb reads, 10 year old darling has a choice, it's down or out. In a shanty called Paradise, Darling and her friends spend their days stealing guavas and singing Lady Gaga, all while grasping at memories of life before and dreaming of escape. A dream that one day comes true for Darling. But as Darling discovers, her new life in America is a far cry from what she imagined, and this new, wo this new world brings with it dangers of its own. Okay, so the format is that I'm going to first talk about how I came to this book and just tell you a little bit about the experience of reading the book. So I came to this book at a time when I was living in the United States and I was having a really hard time. I haven't really spoken much about you know, the past four years that I've spent in the United States. And a lot of that has got to do with the fact that when I came here, I had the biggest fear of failure ever. And I felt like I couldn't really talk about my experience because what if I came here and I failed? And my definition of failure changed a lot, but it was like not achieving what I came here, what I set out to achieve. And what I had set out to achieve by coming here was to study, get my degree, and to um, obviously... Uh, pursue post-completion um, work and then whatever else would happen from there but I really wanted to make sure that I got my degree now that experience was incredibly challenging like it was difficult it was very difficult and at some point I'll talk about that and so the way that I came to this book was I was living in New York um, and at the time I had just graduated and I was working in a factory now I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person who I'll do what needs to be done. Okay, hear me well. It doesn't matter what needs to be done. I will get it done if it needs to be done. And at the time that I was working at the factory, I definitely um, found a way to make it work for my creative writing. I definitely feel like one of the benefits of being a writer is that you can go into any space and that space can serve you and serve your writing in the sense that it helps you see how people interact with each other and it helps you write your characters better. Well, that's the aim. And so while I was working in the, in the factory, yes, I was packing boxes that is definitely a story time that I need to do at some point but not now um, and yeah it was I mean I had moments of being like wow really is this what I came all the way to do is that is this what I spent all this money to come and do in the States um, and then I started thinking about all the people who come to different countries but particularly the US um, wanting to do better for themselves for whatever reasons that they initially come here for um, I think everybody wants the best for themselves and so working in the factory really got my mind thinking about like not just myself but about all the women that came before me who had to you know do some of the things that I had to do with like that I had to deal with like working in a factory and making things work for me even though that's this that was not what I had dreamed for myself and so we need new names came at that time and something that drew me initially to the book was the cover um, was the title rather excuse me and you know something that I often spend time thinking about is how um, 
language is something that is not accurate and even when language even when we're using language to its optimum even when it's operating at its peak it is always ever just an attempt at it is always ever trying to convey something that it never quite manages to convey and i think that we need new names started getting me thinking um down that track of like how language in itself just doesn't serve the purpose that it's meant to it's the best that we can do but it's not quite there and i'll say that one big theme in this book that i really enjoyed is that um is that of language and how language um is exactly what I've explained. It's like it's an attempt at something, even when it's operating at its best. For instance, let me give you an example. So as Africans, and I can speak specifically as South Africans and as somebody who grew up in the township, we use a lot of like um, sounds to convey things, you know? And I actually noticed when I lived in Sweden and people do the same thing with yes, I think they go, that's how, well, that's what I've noticed. I don't know if it's an official thing or not. But I can speak for myself when I say that, you know, when I talk, when we talk uh, in South Africa, there's a lot of eh, 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 or even simple things like, <whistles> you know exactly what that means, you know, eh, eh, and then I went out, you know, like there's a lot of like the way we use our voices and the tone that we use or like the volume that we use conveys something that we are not quite saying in words, but it's said in other ways, you know? So we communicate in ways beyond just language. Sometimes it's even just a look. And I think a lot of black people know this. Like sometimes, you, and I'm sure there's people who, can, who will always tell you that like, oh, there's a look your mother will give you and they don't have to say anything and you know what they're trying to say. But for me, it was a, it's a, there's a very specific thing, a very specific experience that Africans and black Africans specifically have when they go to new communities. And I only say that because I'm a black African and that's the experience that I know. And I sometimes feel like there are things that get lost in translation that can never be regained through language. And so this book does a very, very good job of communicating that i'll give you one more that i think is a very good example in south africa when we speak we'll often say something like oh i'll see you just now i'll see you now now and people who visit south africa for the first time or who encounter south africans who um for the first time don't really get that until they're in south africa or they're around south africans for long enough to understand that just now 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 and now mean three different things okay if i say i'm gonna be there now now another south african will understand what i'm talking about you know for the most part so it's that kind of thing you know um where um it's not an official way to communicate, <laughs> but it gets the message there in a way that um, normal language or normal language doesn't. Um, another thing that I really enjoyed about the book is that it gives equal attention to the time spent in Zimbabwe and the time spent in the US. I really enjoyed that because it conveyed the fullness of life for those young people that um, we follow when we're in the Zimbabwe portion of the book, you know. And another thing that I really enjoyed about the book is that it reminded me about the resilience of children and the importance of play. The, there's a lot of people, myself included, who when I look back, I'm like, oh my gosh, like things were really tough. But you can but but when I think back on my childhood, I, I think I have good memories. I literally have good memories of playing on the streets, being dusty as all hell and um and um just having a good old time you know um as children regardless of the fact that you know we were not what people would consider um middle class we were we were poor man i mean if you if you've read or if you've watched any of my other vlogs you will have heard the stories that i told you about how i grew up and so it's just always interesting to hear about how children no matter where where the children are from will always have this like ability to play and to be to dream and to have like um to think of the future even when things are dire and i think it's that naivete that allows children to do that and so i really enjoyed that the zimbabwe portion was fun playful humorous there was a lot of like depth and intensity in what darling experienced but it was conveyed in a, a way that really made you feel that innocence of a child um, i also really loved the the u.s portion of the book 
where um, I think anyone who has gone from their home to a new place hoping to do better, whether that's for a job, whether it's for studying, whatever the, the reason for moving is, um, I think that there's just like so much disappointment and so many things that even when people try to prepare you, you're just not prepared for. Um, and in this case, I don't think that the main character of this book was prepared for any of that, especially because she was so young. In any case, this book is something that I really, really genuinely feel like everyone should read. I'm someone who has a very hard time reading stories about Africa that depict us in a way that is just on the struggle bus, okay? Or that depicts us in complete suffering and complete just, complete and utter despair i really have a hard time with books like that and this book is not that this book communicates just a level of resilience and and realness but with grit um and the writing is brilliant the writing makes you just want to be a writer quite honestly i mean it doesn't all writing um that's good um, so yeah, I'll leave it there for now. I think that you should buy this book if you can um, or listen to it on Audible if you can. At some point, I do want to start doing book giveaways, but I do want to wait a little bit until I get to that point and really think through what is the purpose of doing that. I mean, of course, the main purpose is I think everyone should have books, you know, and if I can put a book in someone's hand, I would love to do that. But I do want to think through how I would like to do that, whether it's a raffle um, whether it's by signing up to some newsletter or something i need to think about it because i'm always buying books and every time i buy books i'm like oh my gosh i wish i could buy books for a random stranger and so that's something i'm going to incorporate later on in this um, series and um that's all that i really want to say about this book i don't want to tell you too many details i mean i think the things that i've said are things that are already out there that the author themselves has mentioned so um i feel comfortable sharing those things and um yeah, I just think that this is an important read for for anyone and everyone. I really think this is a book that should be on many people's, on, on everyone's bookshelf if you can read and are interested in reading in English because this copy is obviously in English. Um, I actually don't know if this has been translated in other languages. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention that I really enjoyed about this is that there's a lot of times where she's whether where uh, Noviela specifically writes in um, Shona or Sezulu and it is just so refreshing to see that in print or to see that in like a uh, in a sentence that is filled with English and then you just see that word and then you're like, oh, this book was written for me to read. You know, yes, I don't speak Shona, but I understand Shona well enough to be able to catch all the words that were thrown in here. Anyway, I'm going to move on to the next session, the next section, which is all about the book community spotlight. Okay, the book community spotlight for today is I feel like I've probably already spoken about this person. If you know me in person, you will have heard me speak about this collective for a while. But today it is the Free Black Women's Library, which is run by a young woman called Ola Ronge. And I actually had the pleasure of meeting her at MoMA PS1 when they were having like a zine festival. And um, I was completely, do you hear me? Completely bowled over by her her spirit her energy her love for the project and that a project like that existed and then she did it just from a, her mind's eye her mind it was just an idea and now it's a reality and it has now grown to a point where she is now going to have a physical space in where my favorite place my favorite place bedside brooklyn so um let me just read a little bit from her website. The Free Black Women's Library is a social art project, interactive installation and book collection that celebrates the brilliance, diversity and imagination of black women writers. In 2021, we aim to launch our reading room and book, book mobile, book mobile, Book Mobile in Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn. And you can donate to their GoFundMe. I'll add the link in the bio. The library features a precious collection of 3,000 books written by black women. This collection also includes some comic books, zines, journals, books on tape, and other literary ephemera. 
the library provides monthly free gatherings that come with workshops, film screenings, book discussions, literary games, author features, and radical conversations. The library provides an inclusive and loving space for reading, writing, resting, learning, creating, and connecting. It's a community hub, a love letter, and resource. I mean, excuse me. So if you have the time or, or the funds or the resources, please donate to them. Um, I think you can also volunteer with them if you're based in the US. If you are not based in Brooklyn or New York, you can obviously um, support them by going on the GoFundMe and also looking online. I remember when I first met her, I think this was in 2019 or 2018, I can't remember when it was, um, she mentioned that they were working on an archival project or like a way of um, seeing which books were available when because the way that it actually works is that if I have a book by a black woman I can donate it or trade it for another book or I can just drop the books there for for someone else to pick up and it's a hundred percent free that's the most beautiful thing about it um, talk about service talk about service yeah I'm, I'm i'm very very much inspired by this project and um i if i could i could i would scream from mountain tops um about it and this is my little way this is my little mountain top that i can scream from um yeah next up is going to be the music or the mixtape the mixtape of the week okay for the mixtape of the week i am going to invite you to listen to Ati Mac and um, the link to the mixtape which is 44 minutes long is in the description. I met Ati a long time ago in Cape Town and at the time that I met Ati I had no idea that um, music was something that she did and I went to a few parties and was like oh this is so good and then when I looked up Ati was DJing I was like ha and now and um, it's been interesting just to watch Ati's evolution over the over the years the mixtape that I have put in the link is one that is quite gentle it's like an easy listen um, literally it's called soft water light showers and the little tagline that goes with it is purify the heart renew the spirit I mean who doesn't need to do that um, given the way the world is right now. So that is my recommendation for the mixtape for this week. And I really hope that you enjoy it, you know, um, or even if you are not in a space to listen to it right now, it's something that you will return to or at least follow Ati Mac on Mixcloud or Soundcloud um, because I know that um, there's profiles on both. Thank you so much for joining me. I definitely feel like I was very nervous today and just stuttering and stammering and judging myself for everything that I said. And I was definitely in that space of everything that I said, I felt like I could have said better. But I'm just going to um, allow myself to just keep going and to also trust that I will get better at doing this as I continue to do it more often. This is a weekly offering, so my hope is that by the third, fourth week, I'm in it and it's not as hard anymore. Next week, I'm going to be talking about Asata's book because, yo, that book, that book is another one that everyone needs to have on their bookshelf. In any case, Thank you so much for joining me. I'll see you again next week. I hope you have a good day further. Goodbye.